Hey, is the internet down? What? That looks up to me. Hey, is something up with the internet? Uh, let me check. Nope, it's up. Hey, is the internet down? Huh? Oh, uh, let me check. Well, technically, the internet is up. It's just that DNS is down, but you just can't resolve any domain names. What? 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 Uh, what? Oh, yeah, I rebooted Pi Hole. Hey, welcome back. So I'm Techno Tim, and today we're going to talk about running two Pi Hole servers and keeping them in sync. And real quick, before we get started, if you run into any problems along the way, check out my live stream. I stream on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I spend a lot of time answering your questions. So if you need some help along the way, come by and say hello. And another thing before we get started, thanks ahead of time for the likes and comments. It lets me know if I'm on track. So let's get into it. So you know what Pi Hole is. It's a self-hosted, network-wide ad blocking service. It helps block ads and malware sites for your whole entire network. And you might be running it bare metal, say on a Raspberry Pi, or virtualized in a virtual machine, or containerized using Docker or Kubernetes. And regardless of how you have it installed, we all run into the same problem. It's that when Pi Hole is down, no devices on your network can resolve DNS names. And while you can run two instances of Pi Hole, it's been a challenge to keep those in sync. You see, I use Pi Hole for more than just ad blocking. I also use it for local DNS. And with the latest edition of CNames, I'll start using that too. And so now the challenge for me is keeping all of that in sync. I've been looking for a way to keep my local DNS entries, my block list, and my allow list in sync across two Pi Hole instances. And while Pi Hole doesn't officially support this yet, there's an open source project that's made this possible. That project's called Gravity Sync. Gravity Sync will synchronize your Pi Hole databases across two Pi Hole instances. And while there are some limitations, it synchronizes the most critical things for me to keep my network running. So the things that will sync are my block lists, my domain allow and blocks, any of the custom regex block and allow lists I have, and my local DNS settings. And soon, it'll synchronize CNames. So there are a few things it will not sync. So it won't synchronize local network configuration. It won't change or use the admin password or account in PyHole. It won't change any of the upstream DNS servers. It won't work with DHCP. And it won't sync any of my stats. But this works out fine for me because I don't use DHCP in PyHole. And the stats, while it would be nice to synchronize these, I'm okay with the stats on my primary PyHole server. And I think this is a fantastic gap solution until PyHole, if they ever do, allows us to create a highly available Pi Hole cluster. But until then, this is as good as it gets. So let's hop right in. The first thing you're gonna need is a Pi Hole server. Now, you should already have one set up and configured. So I won't go into how to set that up. But after that, you'll actually need to set up a second Pi Hole server. Now your second Pi Hole server can be installed on any of the ways I mentioned earlier. It can be bare metal on a Raspberry Pi. It can be virtualized in a full virtual machine or it can be containerized and choose your way of containerizing it. All three of these will work, but there's one caveat if you containerize it, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But you'll want to get Pi Hole installed on your second machine. And after the install is complete, we'll go out to the web UI. And once you're here, we'll log in and configure a few things. Now the way that I have mine configured is that I match my secondary server with my primary server. So let's take care of that real quick. First, we go into settings, and after going into settings, I'll pull up my primary Pi Hole server on the left and have my secondary Pi Hole server on the right. One thing I recommend doing is backing up your primary Pi Hole server. That's as simple as going into Teleporter and clicking backup. But we'll configure this in a way that we don't affect the primary server at all, but we'll get into that here in a few. Then I'll copy the settings from my first Pi Hole server over to my second Pi Hole server. Next, in DHCP, you'll want to make sure that this is disabled. And then you'll want to check the rest of the settings to make sure that they match. The next thing we'll want to do is verify that we have all of the required packages on both servers. And most of these packages are required for Pi Hole anyway. 
but you'll want to be sure that you have these requirements fulfilled before we go any further. And that's as simple as just installing these packages. The next thing we'll need to do is make sure that we have a passwordless sudo on both servers. And this is so our sync can work properly. Now, at least in Ubuntu, it requires a password when you use sudo, but we're gonna remove that requirement so we can synchronize some files in our sync. Because when we run in our sync, we don't have an easy way to provide a password. So on my secondary Pi-Hole server, the one I just created, I'm gonna enter this command here. It's sudo editor equals nano vi sudo. And we'll go down to this line right here. We'll comment that out and we'll add a new line. Now this is basically saying that any of our sudoers don't have to provide a sudo password when they run a sudo command. And on my Pi-Hole server, I only have one user, so I'm gonna apply this setting, but feel free to change this to suit your needs. So we'll wanna save that. And I found that I needed to reboot my server after I apply that setting. Then you'll want to do that same thing to your primary Pi-Hole server. After applying that setting, save and reboot. Okay, so I promise that's the only thing we're going to change on our primary Pi-Hole server. After this, we're going to leave it untouched. Then we'll want to go to our primary Pi-Hole server and we'll want to run this command. This command is going to do some checking to see if we can synchronize the two machines. And it goes through and validates authorization. Then it makes sure we have the required components. Then it does a little bit of diagnostics, runs a status report, and then a few other things, but it exits without making any changes. And this is just making sure that our system is ready to be synchronized. Then we'll go to our new PyHole server and we'll run this command. This command is going to do some of the same things, but it's actually going to configure our machine to synchronize with our primary. And so it has a wizard to walk through a few things. And I'll go through the advanced options so that we can see them. So first it asks whether or not this one's in a Docker container, and then whether or not the remote one's in a Docker container, the default path to PyHole, the SSH port that our sync is going to use, whether or not we want to ping and check, our SSH key location, whether or not we want to replicate local DNS, our backup retention, and then we'll supply the primary IP address of our PyHole server. And now it's going to test. It's going to ask for our SSH user, prompt whether or not we want to connect, and then prompt for our password, and then it's configured. So now if we go into our new PyHole server, our secondary one, we can go and check for some of our block lists. And you might notice that nothing's here. Well, there's a few more things we need to configure. The first thing that I do is just compare. So before I write anything, I just want to compare whether or not there are any differences between my PyHole server. And we do that by running the script with compare. And you can see that there's a difference in my gravity database, my custom lists, and that replication is required. So there's a couple things we can do here. We can actually sync this both ways, or we can pull from the primary to the secondary. And on this initial sync, you should probably just pull because our primary PyHole server has all of the changes that we need. And we know that our new PyHole server doesn't have any. So let's pull the changes from the first one to the second one. And the way that we do that is run that same script, but add pull. And as you can see, it pulled it down. So let's refresh our new PyHole. And here we go, we can see some of our blocked items. We can also see that our allow list synchronized. And if we go into our DNS records, we can see our local DNS synchronized as well. So that worked out pretty good, but let's test it again. So let's add a new domain to our block list. Let's say example.com. We don't like example.com, they have bad examples. And so let's add it to our block list. So we see here on our primary pie hole, it's on our block list. Let's run this pull again. And if we go to our secondary DNS and go into our block list, we can see example.com is here with our comment. And we can do the same with our allow list. Let's say example.org. They have good examples. We add it to our allow list, go back, do a poll again, go into our allow list and filter on it, and we can see we have example.org along with our comment. So this is working really great, but we want to automate this. We want this poll to run on a schedule, and so we'll run it on a cron task. And so the way that we automate this is by running the same script with an automate flag. When we run this script with automate, it's going to ask us a few questions. First, our frequency in minutes. 
Now you can set this to whatever you like. I wouldn't set it too low or anything too aggressive, but at the same time, I wouldn't set it too high or too lax. You do wanna make sure that these are mostly in sync, especially for your local DNS records as you're setting them up. But I think that 15 minutes is pretty reasonable. Next is the hour of day you wanna back this database up. And this really doesn't matter. This job runs so fast that you could run it anytime. But for most backup jobs, I pick off peak hours. So three. And after that, the cron job is scheduled. And if you wanna check the cron job, we'll just run a cron tab E, choose our editor, and we can see the cron task here. Now, if you pay attention to the first line, it's actually running this with a smart flag or a smart argument. And the smart is a two-way sync. And while I trust that this script will synchronize things back and forth efficiently and smartly, I guess, I'm only gonna have my secondary pi-hole server pull, just like the command we ran. And this is because I'm never going to use the secondary pi-hole server UI. I mean, I get it, if my primary pi-hole server is down, I'll have to use the secondary one. But on a day-to-day, -day, I'm always gonna use my primary pi-hole server. So I'm actually gonna change this to pull. Now, this is totally up to you, and I totally trust this smart feature. But the way I look at it is, I never want my secondary one to ever touch or affect my primary one. So that this secondary one is kind of throwaway and I can always depend on my primary for the right data. So I'm gonna save this. And again, you can totally keep it smart. I'm sure the feature works great, but I'm gonna go with poll. And so you may have noticed that we had two cron jobs and it even asked us if we wanted to back up our database. And so worth mentioning here is that this is all it's running, is this backup job. And so this is really just a nice utility to back up your databases and restore them if you like. And on a day-to-day -day basis, you won't have to worry about this. This is happening in the cron job. But I figured I'd call it out just in case you need to restore the database at some point. And you would just use this restore function. And so that's all we need to do to have two pi-hole servers and keep them in sync. This is a really quick and easy way to ensure that when one pi-hole server goes down, your house is still able to resolve DNS. And since pi-hole is so lightweight and so versatile, it can go on almost any machine on your network and provide a little bit of redundancy. Now, I know that this is very unofficial, and I know we all wish that Pi-hole had high availability or some redundancy and some synchronization built in, but they don't for now. But if you're watching Pi-hole, please add it, please. <laughs> but this is as good as it gets until then. So a huge thank you to the Gravity Sync repo, because the next time I need to do some maintenance on one of my Pi-hole servers, I don't have to worry about anyone asking me if the internet is down. Because technically it's not down, it's that DNS is down and you know what I mean. So what do you think about Gravity Sync? What do you think about providing a little bit of redundancy to your Pi-hole servers? Do you wish that Pi-hole would add this as a core feature to their product? If so, let me know in the comment section below. And while you're down there, don't forget to give this video a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you run into any other problems along the way, hop in my Twitch stream and let's figure it out. And so, thanks so much for watching and till next time, stream on my friends. Good to hear, it's, a, it's always DNS, yeah. It actually kind of, um, it might be DNS now. Before I was using an IP for my TrueNAS server, lesson learned, lesson learned. Now that I got real DNS running at home, no more IP addresses for me. I, I, I get it that IP addresses are, are fantastic um, and they're kind of, you know, uh, absolute. Uh, but for me, uh, I'm gonna stick to DNS so that I don't run into problems like this anymore. So I can move my TrueNAS server anywhere and it doesn't matter because the IP address behind the DNS entry uh, can change. Uh, and I don't have to touch any of my other infrastructure. So that's another thing I've been going through. A lot of painful DNS stuff lately uh, in the Stuart home, for sure. Well, Stuart and I, yeah, that's my last name. Anyways, in the techno home, I'll say that. <laughs>